Today we will continue with our lecture, which we had started in the last session regarding perception. But before we I, I go into uh, this detail of perception, we need to reiterate, which basically means that I want to re-emphasize the point that perception is a very important topic. Why? Because it tells us as marketers that what we see around us or what a consumer sees around him or her is may not be the reality as we see it. Why? Because finally the individual is unique and he will interpret this information in his own way. And for that, I had shown you a model, which I will present again, where we saw input, which was the information flowing into a black box, which is the individual. And this input we call the stimulus. And the output was perception, which would lead a person to marketing behavior in the sense of buying or rejecting a product or what, whatever is being offered by the marketers. Now, perception, therefore, is a very critical concept. And this will lead us in the final stages into what, if you recall, go backward to the initial lectures where we said that the strategic marketing or the marketing concept requires that you segment the market, then you target the market, and you position the product or position your offering. Now, positioning cannot be done without understanding how would a person or a consumer perceive your offering. To be able to understand this and see its marketing implication, we have to go a little in-depth in the terms and uh, the points that we are making. Now, the terms that we will be using, for example, like stimulus, is anything which is received by the sensory receptors that we have. For example, our ears, nose, mouth, eyes, uh, skin, whatever, which can create a response. And we said that sensory response is something which is an immediate impact that occurs when you receive some kind of a stimulus. For example, uh, if you have put your hand on a hot plate, you will immediately withdraw your hand because you sense heat. Now, therefore, the logic of how strong is the stimulus and how strong and how uh, awakened are your sensory re receptors become an important concept here, particularly because these concepts are normally applied in how you promote your product. Uh, it's basically linked in the method of communication that marketers use to introduce or inform the uh, uh, consumers about their products. At that stage, in the last session, we had proceeded by explaining what is stimulus, uh, the sensory receptors that we have, and over the period we had also discussed at what level does a person respond to the stimulus? For example, uh, we had suggested that in a lot of noise, an added car or uh, a noise, a shore may be ignored. But if that same area suddenly becomes quiet, the, the, the receptors become awakened and they start sensing that something has gone wrong or whatever is happening here. The point that is being made is that this same impact is related to the promotional campaigns that we use. For example, if there are so many uh, messages going through, people tend to block these messages off because obviously they want to protect themselves. Now, in this whole jumble of messages and information flowing and everything, then how does a marketer uh, try to push through all this jumble and reach the consumer? This is where we are, and this is what we will be discussing. Uh, remember, perception is uh, basically how we uh, receive information, how we organize this information, and then how we interpret this information. So basically, we will be talking about these things in this uh, session. But just go back to a little discussion that we had on the just noticeable difference uh, this, this is a very, very critical point, and I gave you a very lengthy example of how pricing is done and how uh, values is created. The idea behind this was basically very simple, that when there is a lot of stimulus, uh, people tend to get so used to it, so used to the thing, that they can't notice the difference. 
Now, the problem is that in some conditions, the marketers may need to uh, avoid this noticing. So they have to operate just below that noticeable threshold. But in some cases, they would like to inform the consumer that something is different. So they have to go above that threshold level. And this threshold level is the point where we can notice something happening. So GND was a critical concept. We have already discussed that. Another associated concept, which I don't want to go into it uh, uh, in, in length or in detail, but I would like to inform you because uh, in, in my experience, I've heard this by, from many students that they would like to try and study this concept uh, in, in research area, which uh, I've been trying to conduct in consumer behavior. The issue is of subliminal information, which basically starts from this concept that people tend to notice things without consciously being aware that they are noticing. Uh, it's a very strange concept that uh, we can notice things, but we are not aware that we are noticing. Now, that particular aspect, people have been trying to study. There have been a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, controversies around it. Some experiments were done. Finally, it was decided or determined by some researchers that there is nothing like this which goes on in the mind of the consumer which can be used by marketers. However, there is another group of uh, researchers who suggest that yes, there is an impact which is called subliminal impact and subliminal, if I might uh, can I add it in Urdu is below uh, your conscious level, yani ke jo zehen ki uh, record karne ka system hai, wo bagair ye jane ke wo record kar hai, wo record kar leta hai. Or is situation ke andar, people try to uh, use this in marketing and number of experiments have taken place. However, there is no concrete uh, uh, information that this is successful, uh, whether uh, giving some information without letting the consumer know that this information is coming through. And when I say information, I am actually talking about the stimulus that we talk about. Uh, something, whatever is what can be noticed. So we're talking about from that angle. Uh, this debate is still ongoing. I'm not encouraging this debate because uh, there is a lot of controversy. So we need to go forward and now try and understand the dynamics of perception, which means, you know, how does the black box operate? I had already mentioned it earlier that this black box becomes unique because each person brings with him or her her own experiences, her own needs, her own motives. Uh, and a good example would be, uh, for example, uh, I'm hungry. Now, my systems are all looking out for an outlet where I can eat. And at that point of time, I am totally focused on trying to find a place what will give me food. Now, this happens because the back box, which is um, operating, starts recalling or remembering certain uh, symbols, certain uh, signs which will lead me to a particular point. So to be able to understand how this whole system runs, we need to understand what is the conditionalities under which uh, people pick up these stimulus and then try and organize them in, in a whole. To be able to be clear on this, please also remember that these stimuluses are not a consistent flow of information. What happens is that consumers receive this information in blocks, okay? Uh, groups of information is coming through. Uh, there is no direct link through all of this, but the individual tries to interpret all this information in his own way. And that is why, like I said before, two people watching the same ad may have totally different reactions because their black boxes have been developed over a period of time through uh, experience, how they have viewed things, and then therefore they interpret that information in the same way as their experience tells them. Or at a point of time, if they have a motive specifically to locate a particular information, then they will tend to receive that information for that purpose. So we have to be able to judge all this. Now, basically, when we talk about 
uh, perception and how the dynamics operate, we must understand that the type of stimulus that is created has to have a certain level of strength. Uh, so for example, if on blank page ke upar, there is a small dot, that will stand out and will create a, a real strong impact on people. So we need to be able to bring this focus as to how people will receive information. To illustrate this point, I'll show you a picture. Let's look at this picture and tell me what do you see. The impact should be, and you will understand that there will be different impacts of the same picture and different people will see it differently. I've just given you a very short uh, time to watch it, but this is what happens in marketing. For example, you're driving on the road, you see a symbol or a sign, you can't see it for a long period of time and stand there and watch it. Well, what happened is it's quickly passing you and you have to interpret this information. And this is what was demonstrated in terms of what do you see in that picture. Now, again, like I was saying that this impact of how the pictures and how the stimulus is viewed depends totally also on the kind of stimulus that is being presented. And we said that if there is a contrast between two things, that stimulus will be observed more attentively than another one which goes, uh, uh, mixes up or gets hazed out among a number of other issues. This is very, very specific in terms of advertising. For example, if you wanted to show a product and if the product is lost in a lot of information that is around it in the terms of picture and it does not stand out clearly, what will happen is that that information will not be received by the individual and it will be lost in uh, uh, what you call this overall picture that has been developed or the uh, visual that has been developed. It's similarly in terms of music. For example, there is a jingle, music is too high, jingle will get lost in all of that music. So there is an issue that marketers need to understand what that happens. Therefore, the stimulus, the way and the strength of that stimulus, because like I said, at one single time, a lot of information is coming to the consumer. He is trying to watch a number of things. He has to interpret. He has to avoid those things which are not necessary. Now consider that at this point of time, if there is a family going in where you have a child who is about 12 years old, he is interested in cricket. His motive is to find a cricket bat. So he would be running towards the cricket bat area where the mother who is interested in trying to buy some crockery, some utensils, would be interested in moving towards the uh, area where there are these products located. Now, the, the father of the family might have a, a desire to maybe uh, look at some TV TVs uh, and he might like to change that. So his interest is to go straight towards the TV stations where TVs are located or where the electronic goods are located. Now, the point that we are making is that this tremendous amount of information is there. Uh, a person who is trying to purchase cannot just go to each and every item and then cross over these things. But what he will be doing or she will be doing would be to move to those points which are totally selected beforehand by him or her in a, her mind or his mind. And they go straight because they are interested. Their motives take us to that point. Now, again, so we have this whole picture very clear now how uh, uh, the, the, the consumer faces information and how the consumer tries to eliminate the unnecessary information and only goes to the information that he selects or he wants to go to. The second impact that is there is, is considered what we call expectations. Now, expectations is to be able to understand this, this logic of expectations. Uh, people tend to interpret or try and look for things because they expect to find those things at that location. Uh, once people have, and this is very critical in terms of organizations or companies or firms, marketing firms who have outlets. So what do you see when you go to uh, a, a, a company's outlet, not one, but who have a number of outlets. So what you expect is the minute you enter, since you have gone to one outlet, you will see the same things in the second one. And the reason is because you expect to see these. Uh, and that is where the contrast may be a little dangerous in terms of 
uh, certain conditions because people tend to get used to it and they sometimes like to get used to it so that they know exactly where they can find what they want to find. So you will see a number of uh, chains which are particularly like KFC, like McDonald, like uh, major, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, retail outlets who have chains. They normally locate and create a completely similar kind of ambiance, what we call the way the out, uh, outlook is, the way things are placed on shelves, where the things are placed are exactly in their, all their chains, they will find the same products located in the same uh, areas because or the same aisles. Why? Because the consumer has an expectation and he moves in that direction. This is also very typical in terms of uh, maybe even you have discussed it, and I mentioned this last time also, that there is a faculty who is, uh, uh, and people talk about the word of mouth is that he's good, so you expect him to be good. However, the problem with this expectation is that once people get used to the same thing and they start expecting the same thing, the, the thing starts getting lost in their mind. And that is where the issue comes in that the marketers tend to break this, uh, uh, what I call complacency, ya status quo, just ko bolte hai, ke wo ek cheez ki aadat ho gai, ab us cheez ki aadat ho gai, so people start going over it without really paying attention and marketers always try and create attentiveness on their uh, promotional campaigns, on their messages. And that is why we see that we keep changing the ads. Cheese wo hai, paanj dafa ad chalega, then there will be a new ad. The message is the same, but the pictures are changed and the things are changed around it. Obviously then, once we have uh, understood the concept of expectation and how it has an impact on the way we can put the promotional campaign in or the message that is given, we need to also understand the motives that people have. Now, motives is a very strong device and we have done a lot of lecturing on it in terms of um, the Maslow's need hierarchy and the reason for action. But in terms of perceptual uh, uh, selection, we need to understand that people select those things more which they need more. Now, therefore, we would like to link up that old concept when we were discussing um, Maslow's need hierarchy and motivation to go into action and link it up with this concept of perceptions. Now, perceptions, as we said, is not only related to the perceiving of the things, but we also have this relationship with how would we perceptually select something. Perceptually means in our subconscious, we select some things. Now, there are these two links up. Now, uh, and here is, again, if you recall the clip that we showed, it was obviously that a person who is motivated for a particular, uh, to purchase a particular kind of or category of product, his attention will be totally focused on it. It is typically also that a person who is searching for a new car would look for that information more. And that is what we were talking about when we were talking about how should we be able to use this in marketing. Uh, a good example is that if we can understand what is the need that is motivating people or at that point of time, how people come about in taking decisions in their choices that they make, then we, can be, we should be able to influence them by forcing them to select our message or our product. Okay? So that is how we will proceed now to the next step and we will now look at the major core concept which we have been uh, which is available in every marketing book. And that is what we call selective attention, selective perception, selective distortion or you know, interpretation, and then blocking. These are, again, concepts that we need to look at it a little bit more depth, which we had discussed briefly in the last lecture also. Now, we have seen, shown it, uh, these things, so we do not need to, uh, what do you call, uh, Picturize it in terms of a clip or a movie, but we need to understand is that selective perception comes from the point that we need to isolate information and only choose that information that we like to present uh, uh, or we like to have. And that kind of a work is done by our own subconscious when we are trying to perceive uh, a particular uh, uh, product or we want to look at a particular idea or a look at a particular message. And therefore, when we look at a message, we look at it because we are you know, attentive to that message. In the same way, we find that 
we will be able to you know interpret the information from our own point of view and in this interpretation we are again selective in our uh, approach now we have to also understand that people tend to uh, when when they are interpreting information that is coming to them they tend to distort this information and the reason for distorting is that they are trying to protect themselves in instances. And I'll give you an example. Something that does not suit you, uh, you want to block it off, but if it is still coming in, this information, what you will tend to do is to interpret it in a terms of what seems more similar to your own value system. And once again, if you recall, uh, when we were talking about segmentation, we had discussed this concept of value uh, or our personal values. And here is, again, its practical implication coming in because we tend to look at things and distort information, even if a message is being given, uh, the person will receive it, will change the implication of the message to suit his or her own value system, own idea, and so on and so forth. Uh, a very interesting, uh, 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 important thing about it is that when you send a message or if there's a written message, people are, cannot interact with you. They cannot uh, ask questions about what is meant by it. So whatever information is flowing, they will try and change this information to mean what they think it should mean. So they would tend to change the, the total implication of the message or the uh, uh, information that is coming in to suit themselves. And this is a defensive uh, act. For example, when people become insecure, they tend to watch or view things and give it a feeling of, uh, let's say, scare or fear would be coming into position. Similarly, a, a, a burst condition of this is that people tend to totally block this uh, information coming through. They just shut their mind off and they just refuse to uh, receive information. Now, this whole concept relates to selective, uh, uh, what we call selection of the stimulus that we have. And that is the first part of the process that we talked about when we said the perceptual dynamics kya hote. Now, the second part is that when you receive this information, you need to organize it in such a way so that you make sense of what is around you. Uh, organizing things, like we said, we do not ever see the whole picture. We pick major points in that picture and then complete the whole picture for ourselves. This is the way we organize the system so that we can then interpret this information in a better form. Now, organizing has also its own factors involved in it because uh, when you organize things, you do it on the basis of certain points that are relevant to your system. However, from the marketer's point of view, there are three important things. One is the background and the figure. Now, we should understand in this context, from the marketing's point of view, you're talking about the figure is the point of attention that we want to create. And background is the one which we would like it to stand against. The second important point from the marketer's point of view is contrast. Now, again, contrast is to make that figure or that picture or that item stand out. The third is, from the marketer's point of view, how they are grouped together in a, a scene or a scenario. So as the first point, what we were discussing about the background and the item, we would like to see the picture once again. And that picture shows, for some people, it might be a young woman. For the other people, it might be an old woman. Now, the reason behind this different opinion is because you did not pick up uh, the, the total picture as such, but you picked up small points and then put them all together and whatever was in your uh, uh, perceptions has come about in terms of what you viewed. The second picture that I will show you uh, regarding the background and the item itself is about a Gillette product. Now, if you watch this carefully, what you will see is you'll see the desert and down in the distance, you can see a little bit of hill, but what stands out is the product itself. And that is what we are looking at and what is, what is being suggested. These are the marketing implications of 
how the background and the picture itself, the contrast, and how it is organized all is related to each other. Now, the contrast is obviously very visible in the picture that I've shown you, but now look at the organizing of the whole scenario that we discussed. For example, people tend to perceive things in terms of organization. Now, a marketer would not tell that this is a party going on, but if you saw seven or eight people having a, a kind of a tea together with some kind of biscuits around, you can understand or you will perceive and organize this whole uh, scene in terms of that these people are socializing or maybe they are friends got together. Some may even suggest that a party has been invited or called. And that is what you see in most of the ads. Sometimes you only see people dancing, sometimes laughing, and people tend to organize whatever they see in these short clips to complete the whole picture for themselves. Now, this moves on to the idea of a concept called closure. Now, that's a very interesting thing because a human being does not like to leave things or gaps within information. They would like to fill the gap in one way or the other. Uh, in marketing, it is becoming very significant and it is being used by certain marketers whereby they actually try to leave gaps deliberately leave gaps in the uh, ad, written ad particularly, so that people tend to get forced to uh, pick up that information or become more attentive to that. Uh, again, for the same purpose, I'll show you another picture whereby you can see there are three children and their legs are visible, they are wearing jeans, and on top of that, there are three types of guitars. Now, what the marketer has done, he has forced the person to pay attention because He's asking the viewer to link up the gene with the kind of guitar that you have. Now, the idea is not to test them, but the idea is to put the focus on the genes. And this method of trying to get closure is a very interesting phenomena. We also see that people tend to, uh, while they are writing, they will leave a gap and then let the viewer try and fill in the gap and that the idea is not to, again, like I said, test them, but to make sure that they pay attention from all the other ads that they are watching. This might be able to attract their attention. Similarly, uh, you would have noticed that there are certain ads which are run with jingles or with uh, talk going on. And then the same uh, audio side of it is normally placed on radios. Uh, the logic behind that is the closure, the concept of closure. What happens is that if you have seen a regularly run TV, uh, 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 what do you call, ad, and with that you have heard the, either the music, the jingle, or uh, the, the words that are spoken, and then you do not see the picture, but you look, hear only the sound, the sound which is, whether it's the jingle or the music or the words being spoken, the mind automatically tries to uh, link the two up, and at the time that you are hearing that, in the subconscious, you are visualizing the picture. Now, therefore, you will see normally, if you ever go to the FM radios and also watch the television, you will see that the marketers use the, the, no, the sound frame or the sound uh, uh, on the FM and let the consumer link the two up automatically because that is what we do. We tend to complete the gaps. If we find that there is a gap, we'll try and complete the gap automatically. Now, this is related to how individuals or consumers organize information. We now move on to the way the interpretation takes place. Now, remember I said to you that interpretation is unique to a person and a few discussions that we will have now would have a, a relationship with what we already discussed. So, there will be an overlap, but you need to understand that interpretation has its own implications. Now, interpretation of the stimulus that goes into the black box is related to our own personal experiences, and that is how we interpret information, because we have our own information, we have our own experience, we have seen things, and we would like to interpret all these stimuluses that we receive or stimuli that we receive in terms of those experiences as well as what we talked about in terms of motives. Now, motives have also a very important impact 
in when we try and interpret some information that is provided to us. Now, again, like I said, that there is an overlap, but watch that motives were there when we were trying to select information, they were there when we were trying to organize, and also when we are going to try and interpret. Now, all this confuses the whole issue, but if we were to be able to understand a few factors which are unique in terms of interpretation, we will be having a better grasp of uh, how to handle our own marketing programs or our own marketing promotional programs. Now, so therefore, let's look at these uh, few things that we are interested in and see from the marketer's point of view, what are those things that we can manage and that will have an implication in terms of interpretation. Now, the first one is appearance, which is very specific. Uh, if you recall, uh, sometimes if a person has gone to, let's say, Switzerland, uh, and he comes in, is traveling to the north, he will try and associate the same picture that he is seeing with something that he has experienced in the past. And you might have heard people say, well, this portion of the northern areas, for example, uh, Shangri-La or whatever, in the Kagan valleys or in the Murray Hills, you say, this looks like Switzerland. Now, the reason why we are saying it is because the implication, therefore, is for a marketer that people tend to attribute uh, characteristics of what they have already seen to things which seem similar to them. Uh, this is very strong implications. For example, if you have uh, had a good experience with a particular product, then a brand which owns that product, if it launches a new product, there would be a kind of an association and we will try and uh, associate the same thing. This also happens in uh, our daily lives. We look at somebody and we recall we have seen him somewhere and then we associate that relationship with this person and therefore appearances when we try and bring them into position has a normal impact. That is why uh, one more aspect that we look at from the marketing point of view is the models that we select or the model that is selected for a particular ad. Now, since appearances are critical, the choice of model becomes very important and that is what we do. When we look at uh, a nice looking model or a person who's wearing a fine looking suit, we try to associate things with that particular uh, product because that seems to be, the association seems to be that this person knows because he's smart, he looks smart and that is what research has recalled. Research suggests that people who are smart, when you see them and you look at the way they dress up or the way they have made themselves up or whatever accessories they wear, the, the logic is or the association is that this person is more knowledgeable, not because of any other factor, but because he is smart or she is smart. Therefore, the marketers tend to look for models who are smart in appearance and the association, like I said, is that this person is more knowledgeable in the use of the product. From here, we move on to the second level, and that is stereotyping. Now, stereotyping is a very in interesting concept. For example, you must have heard a number of people say, Ki ye manager lagta hai. Now, the idea is, why would a person assume that this manager lagta hai, ya ye ek fauji lagta hai? The reason is because a manager is, has been stereotyped. Uski a khas shaksiyat create ho chuki hai and therefore anybody who fits in with that kind of a, a stereotype model, your association is or your interpretation of that information is on the same ground. Whether he is or not is not relevant and that is what we started this discussion with. The discussion was that the haqeeqat jo hai, wo itni important nahi hoti from the marketing's point of view but the important point is, how does the consumer view this uh, reality? Now, like I said, the person that you are looking at and you are, or we are assuming to be a manager, he may be a doctor, but because certain characteristics or certain stereotyping has been done, we have given uh, the logic of certain characteristics assumed to be part of the manager, and therefore anybody who we see in that same frame, we will assume to be a manager. And that is what happens in ads also. If you look at the ads normally being used by mobile phones, where you see 
somebody is walking uh, and talking on the, uh, on the move, but he's carrying a briefcase, the logic would automatically take you to the point that this man is a manager. Why? Because we are associating or we are stereotyping a manager normally carry briefcases. Uh, this becomes an important uh, uh, concept also in the sense that what we have seen uh, a logic of, let's say, the concept of Harley Davidson, a motorcycle that you most hardly uh, remember. Now, people started associating anybody, uh, I'm talking about in 1970s and 1960s and in 1970s, in America, everybody who used to be on a motorbike, particularly a heavy motorbike, the association or stereotyping was that this person is a rough person. Uh, he is uh, more aggressive. He is more uh, capable of uh, fighting with people. And he is, there was a sort of a negative connotation that was part of it. Uh, why? Because at that point of time, these people used to wear leather jackets and they used to have huge iron studs on their uh, you know, jackets and they used to behave in a very rough manner. So anybody who saw a person on a motorbike was assumed to be of that kind of a ruffian kind of a person. And it is very interesting that Honda at that point of time launched their motorbike in America. And they had to actually fight against this stereotyping, which was done for all people who tend to uh, uh, have motorbikes at that time. And those motorbikes, if you know that Harley Davidson was always uh, above 500 cc level. So it was considered to be people who drive motorbikes were considered to be uh, rough people and not gentle people who are normally family going people. And this same concept was taken by uh, uh, what you call Honda and converted because their ad which came in those days suggested that you can find nice people on a motorbike, but the motorbike that was there was a moped. And a moped is an old model of motorbikes where you could even bicycle if the petrol had finished and it was known as moped. And that uh, the Japanese at that point of time launched the moped against a stereotype motorcycle and they were very successful. Very recently, there was another ad where United Colors of Benetton, this is a brand, a Benetton of clothing. So people who have given us clothes, but they normally have a lot of colors involved in it, and therefore they are known as United Colors of Benetton. Now they put an ad in the newspaper where they showed two people, uh, a black, a Negro, and a white man, an American, both handcuffed together. Now, the idea that they wanted to generate, and it's a very interesting point here, the idea that they wanted to generate was that there was, you know, a, a peace between the two, and there was uh, no racial problems between the two. They were joined together in uh, the use and the clothes of Benetton. So they were showing uh, a, a friendship, a closeness between the two people. However, because of the stereotyping in those uh, uh, in the American system, where many people interpreted that as the black man was uh, the prisoner of the white man. Now again, this stereotyping creates problems because nobody assumed the other way. Uh, you find there are black police people also, policemen also. So they never nobody assumed that it is the uh, the black who had arrested the white, it was assumed that the white had arrested the black. And that kind of stereotyping is very dangerous. And therefore, for the marketers, it is very important to try and avoid uh, a picture that they have developed or a scenario that they are bringing out, which has some stereotype characters in it. To avoid that, you need to be very careful in selecting the the right type of stereotype person, for example, like I gave you the example of a manager on the mobile phone or some people having fun because that kind of stereotyping is more sensible. But going in towards dangerous kind of areas, like I gave you the example of this uh, ad of Benetton was interpreted not as a peace thing because that was what they were conceiving, uh, but as a racial thing where the white had uh, arrested the black.
Now we go to the third uh, concept, which is very important, and that has very strong marketing implications, is the first impression is the last impression. Here I would like to digress from marketing and also move in towards the ma management area where we have constantly informed uh, or we constantly teach the students who are doing their masters in ma uh, business administration or bachelors in their business administration that when they go for interviews, the first impression will be perhaps the last impression. These, this word, the first impression and the last impression, has strong marketing implications also. For example, uh, it is suggested that if you are trying to be the first in the market, which normally is uh, made to be a very strong strategy, that is the first mover strategy, where the idea is that the company which moves into the market first always has an advantage. But the problem is that sometimes the companies which come after with the similar kind of product or product of the same category are more successful. And the logic is that the company which moved first may have certain problems still not cleared out, which we call the beta version are in the market. But if some co other company has seen these problems and has improved themselves, the better results will accrue to the company which came second, which moved second in the market. And the reason is that even if that first company which moved in quickly has corrected all the issues and the brand or the product is now without any problems, the impression will still last in the mind of the consumer. They will still assume that this product was faulty. Now, that is something that marketers need to be very careful about. They, there is a contrasting issue. We want to be first in the market, but there could be certain uh, faults or certain small glitches or what you call some fine tuning required. And while we are in the market, an impression is created. Now, if we have improved it, and other companies have also launched at the same time, there will be an issue that that first impression will continuously stay with us. The opposite of this first impression is the last impression. Is uh, the, the other side of the picture is also what we call the halo effect. Now, the halo effect concept is also very interesting. And what we see is that we see one characteristic uh, in an individual, and using that one characteristic, we compose the whole. Remember, I talked to you about closure and about organizing the information systems. Now we are moving towards the interpretation, and the logic is the same. When an individual looks at another person, he may not have time to assess every each and everything. To be able to uh, handle this, what he normally does is he picks up one or two uh, facts, and based on that, he creates the whole image of the person. That is why, again, it is suggested these two things are logically linked together. We normally suggest that when you go for an interview, you must wear a very formal dress. You must have very uh, a fine combination of your clothes. Why? Because the minute the person sees uh, a, a well-dressed person, a halo effect is created, which means an aura is created. A kism ki shaksiyat uske aas create kar di jati and that creates uh, an impact in terms of marketing also. Uh, this is particularly related to management, but if we come to the marketing side of it, we know that if there is a good brand in the market, which has launched a number of products, and now what we want to see is another product coming under the same brand umbrella. Now, when we see that, there is a definite link up between the good product of that good brand to this new product which has been launched under that old brand. Now, therefore, we have you know, concluded on the issue of uh, the association that we have created between two brands. The product which was launched under a new, a good brand, would be obviously associated with that brand and would be assumed to have the same good quality. So there is this association. Uh, but also try and understand that people come to or jump to conclusion, which is the next part. The jumping to the conclusion is very, very singular aspect, and we have already seen it, that most people, without even getting full information, have already concluded what the result would be. A particular example in this situation is a price relationship with quality. 
this previous experience leads them to conclude that without full information, without having tested the product or even uh, uh, used the product, they assume that the product would have high quality because this, this uh, uh, association exists and we come to conclusions without full information and we tend to fill it. And this is what we talked about in the uh, earlier stages of the lecture that people tend to fill in the gaps and they do, sometimes they do not have the time to be able to draw all this information, so conclusions are drawn. Finally, we come to the concept of halo effect. Now, halo effect is a very interesting phenomena, and we have uh, discussed that in the system of where by one product, when you launch, would have an association with the other product. Finally, what we have done today is basically discuss the whole concept of perception and how perception dynamics takes place, which will lead us to, as what I said in the very beginning of the lecture, would lead us to the concept of perceptual mapping and positioning, which I suggested is a very critical concept. So we will be launching our next lecture using the, uh, the concept of perceptual mapping and positioning within the context of a strategy. Just to conclude now from the things that we have been discussing, uh, we need to be able to see what we have gone over. We discussed the way people select information or collect information or draw stimulation or stimulus that we receive, how we use that from the point of view of being selective in doing that. Then we have seen and we have tried to check how people tend to organize all these uh, uh, stimuluses in the way to interpret the whole information for a, for, for, for a simple reason that we need to have a clear view of where we are because people do not like to be left in the dark. They want to be clearly located in a particular aspect. Uh, just to add this knowledge, this is also called gestalt, a German word, and it suggests that we tend to complete the information that we have and try to bring it all together. And if you recall, uh, in the chapter that we discussed research, we had logically talked about uh, the areas that we leave open, like a storytelling, uh, let's say cartoon. What we try and do is that we leave, uh, we show a cartoon and then we ask people to try and tell us a story about that cartoon. So what we are trying to say is that the stimulus is whatever is available in the picture. And from that stimulus, we try and bring about a complete frame that we want to develop. Now, given this, we then moved on towards the area of trying to interpret this information, uh, having organized it. And in that, we have discussed the concept of the appearance that takes place and we, how we associate it with uh, other people or we see a particular thing and we associate it with the other. Then we discussed stereotyping, which is a basic, basically a very uh, a, a cautious area to enter because it can have two different impacts. It can have a positive one and negative one. Finally, we also discussed a concept called halo effect, as well as we talked about the issue of first impressions as the last impression. And the logic was that when products are launched, we have to be very careful that they are what will leave a lasting impression on the consumers. Now, having concluded on this, please remember that we will be discussing uh, the perceptual mapping and positioning. And if you can look at the notes before you come to the next class, we will have a better understanding of this project. Thank you very much.